Good morning. It is September 14th. Just put on my backpack. It weighs about 13 pounds for this long day trip. Put on my shoe and it has a little bit of a rip. <clears throat> That'll have to do. I don't think it's a hole, so. I guess uh, walking in all those rivers last time killed the shoes. Meanwhile, I have parked at Joe Dodge Lodge, the Pinkham Notch Visitor Center. And now I need to walk about one mile south to find my trailhead. I can either do the road or go back along this other trail. I think I might just do the road. There's a tree trying to change there. And uh, all of this cloud's supposed to burn off today. Forecast is good for today. I suppose this is a look at where I'm going up there. That is the Ellis River, and I think I'll be climbing right up that mountain. Okay, here's the highway. There's the parking for Glen Ellis Trail, Glen Boulder Trail, and this right over here. Oh, I can't see what that sign used to say. Hello, Ellis River. <laughs> uh, wow, that's quite a leap. I made it halfway across. I might try something else or... This goes to the parking lot. Again, it looks great to the halfway point. I've never seen the big waterfall. Wow, I'm not crossing there. It's not getting any better. It's getting much harder down here, so I better go the other direction. This is getting to be the waterfall area. It says the Ice Age made this Oh my. I'm back to the very first crossing area. Shallow equals safety. And there's a deep part, so I don't want, let's just go up here for a minute. Okay. And I'm going to get on the shore right there. I'm doing it. Oh, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Yay. I don't have to come back this way. <laughs> That's like always my first thought on difficult areas. One time thing, one time thing. A couple minutes later, I'm at this intersection with, I presume, the trail I did not take, Lost Pond Trail. And maybe I should have. Maybe the water crossing there would have been easier. This is the Wildcat Ridge Trail. It is also the Appalachian Trail. And I believe I read this is the steepest mile on the whole Appalachian Trail. But all those thousands of people do it. So why not me? I can do it. So far, so good.
I think I can. <laughs> My shoe is literally disintegrating. I don't want to go back for the camera, you know. You have to focus on one thing. <laughs> My legs are shaking a little, but it was really fine. <laughs> okay. Good, good, good. You don't even have to look up if you don't want to. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Right when I said you don't have to look up, a big branch fell down. The little branches started catapulting toward my head. <laughs> okay, you have to look up a little bit. There's this kind of drop off there. Wow. I presume. I'm going up there because this is the wildcat range and the mountains have letters A, B, D, C, and E. <laughs> uh, but the ones I have to hit are D and A. So does that mean I get to skip some or are they all kind of going to happen all together? I don't know. <laughs> Do you need water? Maybe. Is it good water? It's very good water. Is it far? No, ma'am. Okay, I might go look. Thanks. Okay. Oh, it's very spongy and wet here. Now, how did I get in here? I think I came right over here. All right, here's where I came in, and I'm going here. Some steps. We'll see. And the trail does not feel short. Came up here and then it's this nice view. And I can see down to Joe Dodge Lodge Pink and Notch Visitor Center, which is where my car is. I really love this part. It's beautiful. This looks very black and spooky up here. It's dripping everywhere. Hooray, I made it. 2.1 miles, that sounds about right. The view from Wildcat. That is so funny because I really do watch that YouTube channel of just looking at Mount Washington all the time and I see people up here and I always wonder, who are they? What are they doing today? Where's that camera? <laughs> Here's 
what we have again. First of all, I came out from there on the trail. And we have some ski trails here. Here's the sign that says the summit. Of course, we have the chairlift. Great looking. Um, there is a mountain. I think I'm still going up. All right, back to the reality of hiking on a trail. Carter Notch Hut 3. So I know I don't have to go 3. And I know I have to go that way. I didn't know there was a platform. Well. The auto road there. Always cool to see the ravine. I've come a long way from all those little lumps on the left. And I'm going more and more. The trail has looked remarkably similar to the hike I did that was the Carter Range. Of course it looks like that because this kind of is the same range. It's like they're brother and sister right next to each other. So the people who are on the Appalachian Trail, which is this, would go along here just as I'm doing. This would be northbound and they'd go by the hut, I think. And then they go up the Carter Range. I haven't been videoing much because I'm gonna come back the same way. But look at this. The bog board is broken and the trouble is, um, that one's gonna get my foot wet probably. And then over here, This one is floating as well, you know what I'm saying? It's moving, it's moving, it's moving, getting wet. So I'd have to do that again if I come back this way. I have come to a very interesting location. This is Wildcat B I'm just coming down from. It wasn't a dramatic summit, just wooded. However, there's a viewpoint here, and then right there, there, right, right there is Wildcat Mountain, or Wildcat A, and then I'll be able to hopefully see down into the valley where the hut is. There's the trail I came on, and there's a little pond, I mean puddle. And over there's the view, and I'm also at the summit of Wildcat A, I believe. Oh. oh my goodness. So the trail, if I were going down, to go down here, less than a mile, and I can hear people laughing at the hut. I've got the camera really zoomed out right now, but across the way there's Carter Dome. So, there's Carter Notch Hut and one of the ponds. And then all these rocks over here lead down to the ramparts, which is a huge boulder field. Those are not little rocks. Those are house-sized rocks. Here's the building, and you can see some of these rocks over here. And of course, over there would be the Carter Range that I did a couple weeks ago. And now I see if I was at Carter Dill, and that's why I said it would be a while before you got a view of the hut. I'm going to come down all that way first before seeing this. So to get here, it took me five hours and I might have a snack. What cereal does that remind me of? I got it, Captain Crunch. This is totally Captain Crunch with strawberries. Not bad. I'm gonna rate this a seven.
here I am back at the sinking bog boards. So I remember I stood on this rock. Ooh. No, no, do not even. Of course, no one wants to fall off a cliff and die. But if you were to fall into a mud puddle, you probably wouldn't die. But it's losing the game, isn't it? You gotta play for wins here. To not fall in the mud. I love to look over and see the tiny trail. Coming down has been easier. There is a sense that I am going down. I wasn't sure I'd feel that way when I was going from D to A. I thought that it was hard, kinda. And um, it was moderate hiking level, but I felt a level of exertion that was hard. So I was like, why would I wanna do this coming back? And maybe partly my relief is just like, I'm done, I did it, now I just have to go down. So I always feel a boost from that. But honestly, uh, trying to be objective, I do think the trail has more downhill going this way. Am I making that up? I don't know. I don't know for sure. And I did check my time and it's three o'clock. Here I am back to this spot. This was one of my favorite viewpoints as I went from D to A because you can see like the way I've come over here. That's quite cool. And of course, because, oh, big dragonfly flew by. And of course, because Mount Washington is right over there and has a cloud hat. But the um, terrain looks very dry and brownish green and summery. And it won't last long before we start seeing a sprinkles of snow up there. Oh yeah, I remember this section with the sideways board. And I think I'm nearly coming back to D. Looks like I'm gonna go uphill again. I'm eating candy. <laughs> And I scraped my shin. Must stay alert. The platform. I am back to Mountain D. Because there's so many sunny days where only Mount Washington is in a cloud. So this is very funny that I'm videoing me standing here talking to my mom on the phone because many, many years ago I hiked to the summit of Mount Fuji in Japan and they had a telephone station there. There were no cell phones, but they had a, a telephone station as a kind of gimmick. And I actually called my mother who lived in San Diego from the top of and I was like, hi, I'm on the top of Mount Fuji. <laughs> and it was a crazy thing. I was making a video that day too with the old school video camera, but the video didn't. So anyway, hi mom. And I'm walking by there. GPS as I walk. Make sure you don't mess it up. 2.3 miles. Ooh. Now Adams and Madison also wearing a hat of clouds. As I continue down the perimeter road, I think that's Wildcat Mountain in front of me. So I was up there. But now I'm down here. I'm still going. The high speed quad, I would guess, Wildcat Express. Extra chairs, doesn't that look cool? Then over here, it looks like they're doing some work on their base lodge, which looks like fun. 
Okay, yeah, so just a day hike, but a 10 mile day hike, very good. I got two summits done, uh, bringing me ever closer to the completion of the 48 list, but don't worry, I'll still be out here because how could I stop? It's all going so great, I love it. I love it out here. Winter might stop me, but let's not worry about that quite yet. So yeah, I know I usually go in the water at the end of these hikes, but I'm not going in that pond. So I'm going in the warm shower over at the lodge there. Just look at 